What's good, Wizards fans? This is your host, the real Ed Oliver and Brandon Scott. Today we have special guest Jarvis Davis from Locked On Atlanta. He's going to give us some insight on our new hiring of player personnel, Travis Schlenk. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today we have special guest Jarvis Davis from Locked On Atlanta. How you feeling today, man? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. How about you, sir? How you guys doing? Doing good. Can't complain. The draft is next week. The finals just ended, so I'm, I'm actually kind of happy that the finals ended because uh, it was rough. Four to one. You know, Jokic finally gets his MVP, so congrats to him. But uh, I think one of the I think the cool thing about this, you know, series is just like looking at, you know, the Denver Nuggets and how how this thing played out. Obviously, coming in, we knew how talented they were, right? You know, that was that was a given. But just kind of like I don't know, man. I talked about it on my show, um, ATL Day One, a part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. I talked about my show today. I was just like, you know, Denver Nuggets winning the doggone chip. That gives me a little hope, man. Just a little hope, just a little bit of hope when it comes to Atlanta Hawks because. You guys kind of understand it, too, because, you know, the Wizards is kind of going in the same spot, kind of middling around, <laughs> you know, average. So, yeah, I, I think this is the this is something that kind of makes me happy, so to speak, when I saw the Denver Nuggets get that thing done. And it just goes to show that, hey, you don't have to go out of here and politic for free agents and t- super team it up to try to get things done. You could do it the old school way. Definitely. Yeah. You don't have to be a super team. You don't have to have you don't have to have Kevin Durant and Steph and Clay and Draymond or. LeBron, Kyrie. Sitting on the banana Lowe. boat, you know, in right, order yeah. to get in the door. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we got to have all that. So, yeah, that's that's where I'm at with it, man. Yeah, right. I, I appreciate that. I appreciated that last night. Yeah. And I saw Trey Young, he put out a tweet saying we're next. So, we'll see about that. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> talked about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. Yeah, my right. brother. <laughs> all right. So, we're going to get to talk about Travis Lang, who was hired as a senior vice president of player personnel for the Wizards last week. Um, so what were your thoughts about Travis Schlenk's time? We'll get into some specific questions. Of course, there's a lot to talk about with the whole DeJounte Murray trade and uh, some things that transpire. We'll talk about, you know, him drafting Trey Young with the trade, um, trading, basically trading uh, Luca for Trey Young, that pick. So we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later as well. But uh, what was your opinion of, of Travis Schlenk's time in Atlanta? And should Wizards fans be happy about the hiring of Travis Schlenk? First of all, let me start off by saying this. I think they should be very excited because when you think about the guy, the value he's able to find late in the middle middle to late part of the first round of the draft, like that's where guys really earn their money. Because when you think about in the top 10 in NBA, top 10 picks is pretty much a no-brainer. Nowadays, probably like top five because, you know, like these guys coming out now, you're talking about one and dunners and all that stuff, man. It's hard to get a good evaluation on these guys because they aren't staying in college that long. And you also don't get the chance to see how they can develop, too, in the, in the college game. So what you see how they can transfer into the NBA game. So I think that Travis Lank was one of those one of those personnel guys that was able to find he had an eye to find those guys, like a John Collins. He was able to find him. And John Collins came in, he developed. He was a guy that, you know, ended up getting paid. But, you know, ask me where he is now, you know. Oh, do he deserve to be on the team? Maybe, maybe not. But he <laughs> and initially he was a, a very good pick for for the Hawks. And they found him late late in that first round. I mean, mid to um, late in part of the first round. Also, they found Kevin Hurd as well. He was, he was responsible for getting him in. And he ended up getting paid because that's at the end of the day – you want to draft guys to come in to be able to be contributors and to get that second contract. And that's what Travis Slank was able to do pretty consistently. So, yeah, that, Wizards fans should be very excited about Travis Slank and what he brings to the table. Right. Yeah, I love the part where just looking at his career with the Hawks, where he came in, it was a rebuilding time. You know, you guys had three rough seasons, but you eventually got to the playoffs. You got to the Eastern Conference Finals, something that the Wizards haven't done since 1979. So that is something that we're looking to strive for. You know, yeah, no, same here. <laughs> yeah, I hate bringing it up, but it, it, you know, it's something yes. that we have to talk about. But it's right. painful. Um, so yeah, I mean, he got good picks in the later rounds. Where usually that eighth or ninth or fifteenth pick, Kevin Herter was a good pick that you guys traded him for good value. 
Um, AJ Griffin looks like a good pick. John Collins turned out to be a good player, even though he's on the trade block every all season or during the season, he's always okay, rumored to be I'm traded. Par for the course, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Trey Young, another great pick, kind of an easy pick because he was a top three pick. But you know, Travis Lane did a good job rebuilding that roster and making you guys into a, a perennial playoff contender. You beat the right. Miami Heat this year in a playing game and look right, where the Miami man. Heat went. So exactly. I think Wizards fans definitely should be excited about Travis Schlank. And also I just wanted to know like what was his philosophy you feel like kind of for looking for players or what kind of style of players that he do you think he really targeted in the draft and really free agency? I, I think that when when you think about Travis, like he's the type of guy that, you know, he wants a certain type of guy from a personality standpoint, right? Like he all you never had he never brought in guys that like, oh man, this dude is a, is a super dog. Like he brought in guys that kind of fit culture, right? Or he assumed that they were going to fit culture when they come in. Like guys who not necessarily going to rattle the cages, but guys who can play basketball. You know, he he was kind of with he was kind of on board with the guys who had stayed in college for a little bit long. When you think about DeAndre Hunter and John Collins and those guys, you know, those guys stayed in college for some time and they were able to develop. So I think that seeing those guys in college, being able to develop and get get them in, but when you when he comes across a talent like a Trey Young, he's gonna take a take a chance, right? He's gonna take a chance to bring a guy in like that. And the interesting thing about that part, right? And I know I kind of mentioned to you guys earlier, like a mm-hmm. lot of people think that, you know, um, Travis would really was on a hundred percent on board with with Trey Trey Young or, or trading for Trey Young. Mm-hmm. Um, excuse me, from the Dallas Mavericks, but. In actuality, man, I never forget this. Like, because I used to work for the uh, flagship station for the Atlanta Hawks um, back when um, Travis came on, and he used to come on every week and do a weekly hit, and he used to talk about always, always talking about this guy, this basketball player overseas that he went to go see, and you know he could never say his name, but we all know exactly <laughs> who he was talking about. You know, Luka Doncic was. The YouTube sensation that, you know, Victor Wimbanyama was before Victor Wimbanyama was even being talked about. And you could just tell, like, I'm the type of person, I'm a good reader of people, right? I can just tell how somebody just absolutely lusts for a player. And he lusted for Luka Doncic, and he wanted him. But here's the thing. Here's why I feel like, you know, the organization as a whole wanted Trey Young. Like, we're in the city of Atlanta. Now, you know, you know, this is, we're in the South. And, you know, Atlanta is a different market when it comes to professional sports. If you go into uh, an NFL uh, stadium, you know, predominantly, it's going to be predominantly white, right? But you go into this uh, NFL stadium down at, down at uh, Mercedes-Benz, you're going to see black, white. You're going to see all colors. You're going to see black females. Like, the Atlanta Falcons have the, the highest uh, season ticket holders that are black and female in the NFL. So it just looks different. It's the demographic. And then State Farm Arena, where the Hawks play, that is different. It's a different look And when you go into all of these NBA, NBA arenas around, around the league. So I think that the organization made a decision to say, you know what? Like, we understand what Luka brings to the table. But we feel like Trey Young would be a better fit in Atlanta. Now, we can have a conversation about where's not who's the better player. I really don't care to get into that. But I feel like both of those guys are good players. And both of them have taken their teams to their respective conference finals. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, all right, sometimes trades, whether who wins or lose, it's kind of can be a wash. And I feel like this may be a wash going forward. But, yeah, Travis is a guy who has a super eye for talent. And obviously, now he's had his misses. You know, I can definitely give you that. But he, when he hits, he hits. Like, think about Onyeka Okongu, probably one of the best big young bigs in the league. People were like, Who? What? Why? Who is this dude? And he's end up developing into a guy that who's going to get paid, whether it be the Hawks or another team comes in and swoops him up. Because if they don't pay him this this year, he going he's going to be a restricted free agent. And I think that the Hawks probably not going to be able to match what other teams going to be willing to offer because that dude is a super talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great insight there, and, and it makes sense. Um, you know, look at you look at owners; they market to their culture. We have Ted Leonsis. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of fans, they talk about kind of how he markets to international uh, markets, right. you know, drafting Rui Hachimura, drafting Denny Avdia. So um, mm-hmm. drafting Rui is just such a big um, It happens, market. man. People just don't yeah. talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah so it makes sense. And, and I, I agree with you. I think both players are great. Trey Young, he took his team to a conference finals. Trey Young has been an excellent player so far, all-star, all-NBA player. Um, so to me, I don't think it's, there's much of a gap, if any, 
Um, you, you can argue that Luke is the better, better player, but Trey Young's had a heck of a career. We're not talking about like Sam Bowie and Michael Jordan or absolutely not. Greg Oden and Kevin Durant. <laughs> it's definitely not that. I would love Trey Young on, on the Wizards, and I, I love what he's done with the Hawks so far. Taking them to the like, <laughs> hate to bring it up again, but Trey Young's been further than what the, the Wizards have been in the past thirty years. So um, we're gonna get to a quick break here, and I'm gonna get to a question from Brandon. But before we do that, today's episode is brought to you by price picks uh, with the nba season being over you can still put wagers on the mlb players in their season you can put wagers on nba uh, wnba players in their season but this is how prize picks works you pick two to six players and if they will go score more or less than their prize picks projection you win up, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry no competing against other people it's just you versus the projections available prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch this includes nba nfl mlb NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, Euro basket, MMA, boxing, WNBA, even cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy, safe, and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the PricePix app or go to pricepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, PricePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PricePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for instant deposit match up to $100. Uh, and thank you guys for listening. Making locked on was your first listen every day. Now, for every day, make sure you guys tune in tomorrow and the rest of the week for draft talk. Draft's coming up next week. So, we're going to try to dive into draft talk as much as possible. Uh, Brandon, you can go ahead if you had any reaction to what was said earlier or any questions. Nah, man, I'm, I'm enjoying the dialogue between you two, man. But I'm going to slide <laughs> right into uh, <laughs> Trey Young real quick. Ice Trey. Mm-hmm. Um, there's kind of this, this, I don't know, opinion around the league that, and it's been said that Trey Young is a coach killer or he gets coaches fired. Is there any truth to that? Is is he? Is there is there any truth to him being hard to deal with? And um, would a change of scenery help Trey Young if indeed there is friction in the front office and within this team? To be honest with you, to answer the first part of your question, I don't think he's a coach killer. Uh, I just think that. Because here's the thing, like the first coach, um, oh my God, uh, Lloyd Pierce, Lloyd Pierce, nobody like Lloyd Pierce, nobody in that locker room like Lloyd Pierce. That wasn't just a Trey Young, Lloyd Pierce type of deal, right? So I'm gonna give him a pass on that one because nobody in that locker room, Lloyd Pierce was a hard behind, and he, to be honest with you, he didn't have any like bad, he didn't, he hadn't accomplished anything as a head coach to be a hard, but because you know, like. Greg Popovich come in and say, everybody shut up. Everybody going to shut up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Or Phil Jackson comes in the locker room and say, everybody shut up. Everybody shut up. And if, but if Lloyd Pierce comes in the locker room and you talk about shut up and, and we ain't losing, you ain't giving me no direction as to what, how I'm supposed to play or, or you're not, you're not feel, I'm not feeling like you're getting me better as a professional, yeah, you're going you're gonna to feel some type of way about him talking to you like that. So I think that – you know, Lloyd Pierce, I give I give Trey a pass on that one. Nate McMillan, now that's a little bit of a different story. I, I, feel, I really feel like Nate really tried to establish some type of relationship with him, and I just I just feel like ultimately Trey Young didn't respect Nate on that level when it comes to how to get me better. Because ultimately, I know people may say this, and they and they, they might not agree with me, but I don't give a damn. Professionals want to be coached, man. They want to be coached. They want to be better as players. And if you're not giving them that, they're not going to respect you. I don't care what you say or do or how you do things or what you've accomplished before you walked in that door. People aren't going to respect you. Those players aren't going to respect you, especially when you got a young locker room and when any little thing can curb any type of momentum you may have towards building some type of uh, a, a team that can be a contender, you know, just to get into the playoffs. So, I really feel like, you know, Nate was able to press those buttons at once it became the um, the interim, and they were able to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. But I feel like that following year, when it came up, it was that was the that was the kind of when that that relationship I feel like it kind of slowly died off because Nate reached out to Trey um, during the, that summer, going into that that, that year after the uh, Eastern Conference Finals, and. He was trying to reconcile, trying to say, hey, man, here's what I want you to do. Here's what I'm trying to get you to do, play more off ball, because that's the only way this thing is going to work. But ultimately, it just did not work out. And I think that that's where the relationship kind of fell off. You know, Trey will never admit to this, uh, obviously, because he's real big on perception. You know, that's why I feel like he started this from the point podcast. Like, yeah, I'm going to tell you the real. I'm going to keep it honest with you. Like, keep it frank. I'm going to break news. 
No, you ain't telling nothing. You ain't gonna tell the real because that's you gonna make yourself look bad if you tell the real of what happened. So I think that I don't think he's a coach killer, but I do think that this whole Nate McMillan piece was ultimately was kind of I kind of put that one on him. But the Lloyd Pierce one, I can't put that on him because nobody like Lloyd. And I feel like this new coach with Quinn Snyder, Quinn has come in say, hey man, here's how you can get better. Um, do you want to win? And Trey seems to be on board. Yeah, um, you know, the thing is, you know, passion can often be misconstrued as an attitude. Right. You know what I mean? You know, to me, he's a passionate guy. Right. Um, to see him mess with the crowd in Madison Square Garden, I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love, I love it. for that, man. Absolutely. 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 I, I mean, and, and that's just what it is. You know, sometimes people label people that are very passionate players as, mm -hmm. you know, locker room issues uh coach killers and I, I i never really felt like that was a fair assessment right. because again he does seem like even going back to oklahoma he seems like a very coachable player right so you know that that's something i really wanted to ask because that, that you know you you hear that a lot oh you know he's a locker room problem or this and, and most of the time he's just a very passionate player yeah you know you go back and to I'll, players like and add to this b uh, he has a guy in that locker room that is not as good as he thinks he is and john collins like john collins he talks a lot, man. Let, let me, I'm going to go ahead and be keep it funky with y'all because y'all my boys. I'm going to tell y'all what it is, man. Like, John Collins is a guy that he thinks very highly of himself just from a leadership standpoint and just, you know, being able to say the certain things that he feels like needs to be said. But at, at the end of the day, a lot of times that doesn't match up with his play on court, you know, on the court. You know what I mean? Because he's a guy that will disappear in games and disappear for games at a time or series at a time. Like you don't even know these guys on the court from time to time. However, you do see the talent. It does show from time to time, but it's, I feel like he just wasn't consistent enough to be able to open his mouth. And then when you start speaking about essentially things being leaked out about what you're saying about Trey, or that's why it's, it's, it's going to be strife because Trey is probably saying, feeling the same thing that I'm feeling. I'm just like, Dude, who are you? you? You know, you're supposed to be, you know, a guy who's a rebounder, you know, finisher at the rim, a rim runner, defensive guy, and you just weren't weren't that. Like, and you have the athletic ability to be that. Like, I see if it was one thing that you were limited. John Collins is a hell of an athlete, and for him to not be be one of the worst defenders at one point in time in the NBA, that was a starter. That's not good. That's not good because defense is about want to man. Like I know. You know, LeBron going to get his guys like that. But night in and night out, when you're not facing those guys that's going to give you buckets, like, it just wasn't a good look for him. So so I think that it's just a lot of – I feel like there's a couple circumstances that, you know, I understand why people will look at Trey and say, you know what, this dude is a coach killer. He's a locker room guy. But there's always – context is king, right? There's always context to it. So I feel like the pairing with he and John Collins – you know, not necessarily kind of like oil and water for, for the most part. They kind of deal with each other, you know, to try to make it work. But I feel like, you know, with this whole coach piece, those are a couple of things that I feel like you can look at it that way. But I'm a proponent of, hey, I know what's there. I know why he feels the way he feels. And, and then this dude comes from his, his pops. His pops, you know, instilled in him to be that type of player. And his pops will speak for him. He's going on the radio and talked about what Trey wants to win. He's a competitor. That's just how he is. And I have no issue with that. You know, one, especially when you get to a point where you're able to say, hey, we next. So, you know, when you say we next, that means you're going to have to, you know, step your game up a little bit this, this, this year as well. So, all of those things to say, I really feel like Trey is a guy that he's going to be the guy that's going to do everything in his power to get this team where he, he wants them to be. But like I can't I can't knock him for the little size things, you know, dealings with the John Collins or or dealing with a coach who doesn't know how doesn't know the know how to uh, uh, effectively communicate with a young locker room in Lloyd Pierce. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all I'm all on board with Trey being the guy to to stick around and see this thing out um, down here in Atlanta. I'm with you, man. I'm a big Trey Young fan. Huge. Uh, like I said, I love the passion. I love the attitude. If you could tell Madison Square Garden to sit down and be quiet, I'm with you, man. So, Me too. Um, talking about expectations, um, let's talk about this backcourt. Trey Young, DeJounte Murray. Um, what is the ceiling for these guys, and what is the floor? And at what point do you question whether they can coexist in the same backcourt? Wow, that is a great question. Um, 
for me, initially when Nate was still the head coach of this team, I was I questioned it a lot <laughs> whether or not it could work. But as the season went along and then they ended up firing Nate McMillan and they brought in Quinn Snyder, I started to see some flashes of what I like to see, right? I, I like to see some some of the things he was kind of mismatching those guys. Didn't have him on the floor at the same time, you know, and DeJounte Murray was able to get work while Trey was off the floor because we know DeJounte Murray is a different type of PG than Trey Young is, right? Trey was struggling shooting the three. But DeJounte, he had an okay year shooting the three, like kind of like average, like what he what we used to see him. But from a mid-range standpoint, there were some times where he had some defensive laps, lapses, but he was brought in to be the defensive guy to help a, a Trey in that backcourt, right? Because we know Trey – Defense ain't his best. And that's, that's just kind of how it's going to be because he's a height challenge right now at this point, and that's not going to change. So I, I think that, you know, those are some of the things that I feel like. But I will say this, though, when it comes to Trey's defense, you start to see a change defensively. He started getting more active using his hands, kind of like a Steph Curry, like kind of evolved defensively like, because they used to have to hide him early in, the, early in his years as well. So – he, but he was able to find a way to be effective. So I think that ultimately Trey and DeJounte could work. I really feel like it could work. And But the only way I thought that we could work is they have to have an, a, a, good, a good to great coach because we see how St- Steve Spagnuolo and how he was able to work. Well, not Steve Spagnuolo. Why I keep saying that? Eric Spolster, excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Thinking football. Oh, my bad. Um Eric Spolster and Michael Malone, what they were able to put on display, their coaching adjustments throughout the playoffs, like they needed that type of level, that level of coach to be able to get it done. That's why I, that's the only way I felt like it would be able to get done. And no, no shade towards Nate McMillan, but I really feel like Quinn knows how to tap into his players, and I really feel like he can make it work. It's just a matter of is the money going to work? That's the big question going forward for the Hawks, and whether or not Dejounte Murray and Trey Young will, will stick around. Love the answer. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think there is some fruitation to this backcourt. It's just that, you know, look, three, three first-round picks. It kind of behooves them to try to figure that thing out, you know. Gotta figure that um, thing out. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> so before I pass my mic to my man, um, Cook, uh, we, we were talking before about um, uh, Doncic and Trey Young and, you know, the fit in, a, in the ATL. And we were mm-hmm. kind of joking about this. Like, we don't see Doncic – Making it rain in Magic City. I'm just saying. <laughs> nah, yeah, probably you know, not. You know what I mean? Probably a good assumption there. Yeah. <laughs> However, I don't know now. Like Luca got a little, got a little soul hookah. to yeah, him, we, my brother. Yeah, we saw the, the picture of him, you know, with the hookah. So hookah don. Yeah, party, yeah. He, but... Like he's gonna. There are so many hookah spots. Like hookah, hookah spots in Atlanta right now. Ed and B. When I say there are like churches and doggone uh, waffle houses on the on the highway, like. There's, there's a hookah lounge on every block now down down here in the city now, man. So yeah, he would have definitely found a way to figure to uh, to fit in, and eventually he would have definitely made his way to Magic City because you know Luca looks like a type of guy that likes a little variety, and uh, you know <laughs> you know there's a, plenty of shoe models that you know come from all over the world that come to Magic City to make money, and I'm figured pretty sure that he probably would have been able to invest at some point if he would have came down into the city. So yeah, I'm, I'm that's where I am with Luca, man. But yeah. Overall, though, I, I feel like the whole, the fit piece was was really big because, like you said, the level of talent is there for both of those guys. But yeah, man, as far as the the atmosphere, you know, when it, when people come down to Atlanta, man, like like you pretty much either you're gonna adapt or you're gonna leave. And I feel like Luca probably wouldn't be able to adapt. Um, I'm for sure. Mm-hmm. So we can yeah. hold back on lemon pepper Luca. I don't know. I like the sound of that. <laughs> I'm sure he would have got that nickname pretty quickly because, you know, Luca like to eat. Like, I don't know. He probably it was his best bet to stay away from, from Atlanta because, you know, the food down here, man, it's, it's I, I've partaked for a very long time. And, you know, it took me a while to get some of this weight off. So, yeah, there's it, plenty of spots to eat at. So, yeah, it probably was best for Luca to go on to Dallas, man. Right. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at the court side with the Hawks games every time, you know, it's, it's one of the Migos or some type of rapper, you know, Ice Trader Gang and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, speaking of speaking of Lemon Pepper, Lou Williams was on the roster. I thought that was a good pickup for the Hawks that Travis Lank made. Of course, he brought right. in Gallinari that eventually they traded him for DeJounte Murray. Um, they got Bogdanovich. Um, he was helpful in, in the playoffs yeah. as well. He's still been a, a big help. And they traded for Sadiq Bey, who I think is a good player. Yes. Um, has yeah. a lot of potential as well. 
Kevin Herter, you brought up. I think the only miss he really had in the draft was probably Cam Reddish. Sharif Cooper's not on the roster anymore in the second round. Um, Mari Spellman. But um, I did want to talk about why um, why did Travis Schlenk step down in the middle of the season? Just it was kind of, you know, different, you know, why he stepped. You know, people usually don't step down right in the middle of the season right. as a GM. So that was different. And then, of course, um, the reports about the owner's son. Um, I got to pull up his name because I always forget his Nick name. Wrestler. As well. Nick yeah, Wrestler. Nick Wrestler. You know, how much is he involved oh, in everything? So <laughs> what's going on? Is there Was there really turmoil with Travis Schlenk, um towards the end of his tenure with the Hawks? And I know he stepped down. He turned into an advisor, so he wasn't he wasn't fired. But um, was there anything odd with the situation going on? There? He, he was fired. <laughs> he just like he said like like we just had a conversation about what all he did for the organization right bringing all these players in bringing in this talent getting them to the point where they're able to get to the East Conference Finals so you don't handle the person like that like you don't handle him oh he's mm-hmm. fired well, you know he's relieved of his duties and all that stuff you kind of say ease into it say you know he's stepping down you know advisory role but he's not a, he was no longer in the building after after that after he stepped down nobody saw Travis Lane it was kind of like where's Waddle where's Travis nobody saw him so I, I think that you know that was just a respect piece I think in that part but as far as reasons why he kind of slid on out because to be honest with you he didn't want to do the Jante Murray trade he thought the ass was too much he they three first round picks like we but all of us has mentioned, have mentioned that that was a lot. That's a lot for DeJounte. DeJounte Murray, heck of a player. But three first-round pick worthy? Eh, that's the Kevin Durant almost conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of where we are with that. So, I, I think that, you know, he thought the, the ass was too high. But, you know, there were some reports and some conversations that I've had with some people that, hey, Mr. Uh, Nick Wrestler, Really wanted to get this done, and somehow, some way, it got done. And and I think that that was kind of the beginning of the end. That's when we saw Landry Fields start to come into play. He was named a general manager, and all you heard when Landry, that's why you heard Landry, at every opportunity that he could possibly get when he was introduced as a general manager team, I made the decision. I did this. I did that because guess what? He knows that the reports were out there that Nick Wrestler is really running things. And he got his homeboys that, you know, a beat writer from used to cover the Warriors in the in the, in the front office now. And he got one of his homeboys that was on his LinkedIn page, you know, and just popped up with a position in the front office. So it's just a lot of little flugation that's going on behind the scenes. But I think ultimately, you know, Trap, they, they respect him enough to say, hey, he's stepping down. This is his decision. And also, and this is probably looking probably the smartest move that the Hawks have made within the past couple of years is that they went on and tried to uh, jump on Quinn Snyder really quickly. So, Because think about this. If you Quinn Snyder and the, the, uh, the 76ers gig is open, potentially the Boston Celtics gig could have been open, possibly. They probably stuck with Missoula because, like, hey, who's out there they were going to bring in? You know what I'm saying? So when you have all these these head coaching spots open in the Milwaukee Bucks, who don't want to coach Giannis? Like, you don't think Quinn Snyder wanted to coach Giannis? So the Hawks are kind of looking like they making some good decisions to bring in on Quinn, Quinn Snyder now. They gave him the money, what, $5 million a year, I think he's getting um, annually. So uh, I think that it was a matter of kind of, kind of timing, right? So – Travis Lank, we know, hey, it's your time to go. Go ahead, step down, and then not wait to the end of the season to have to compete with other teams to get Quinn Schneider. Hey, call Quinn Schneider while he's on a two-month vacation out overseas. Like, hey, man, you want to come on now? Like, we'll give you a little extra money to put on the pot. So so he got the pro-rated salary for this year, and he got the extra what, four years on his contract. So, yeah, it's – it was a lot that had to do with it, and I think it had to do with, like, the timing of it. But, like I said, I will say that I am very pleased with the hire of Quinn Snyder because – and it was very smart of them to, to go ahead and, and hire him at that point during the season because, Lord knows, he wouldn't be this head coach, I feel, if he had opportunity to, to coach the Bucs or the, and or the, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. 
Right. So Travis, so he he, so he was fired, but they were nice. They said he stepped down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, know, you know, yeah. Ted. You know yeah, how it Ted is sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Ted Leonsis, he tried to be nice with with the um, with the report when they did let go of Tommy Shepard. They said they parted ways, which is the professional way to right. say it, instead of saying you're fired. Of course. But um, right. yeah, it sounds like Slank, he had a, he had a good um, career with you with the Hawks in Atlanta. Of course, um, came from the Warriors, won a championship over there. Um, some say he tried to like kind of copy what he, what they did with the Warriors staff and Trey, kind of similar play styles. Yeah, absolutely, you know, um, can shoot it from long range threes. Can so you get in the parking lot, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. what was your favorite draft pick or move from Travis Lane? It's my last question. I mean, what was what was one move that you think really um, he could have he could have did better the, in the oh, draft wow. or, or for agency trades? I don't know. The DeAndre Hunter one is kind mm. of still kind of haunts me a little bit. Um, mm. First of all, let me say this: a Trey Young one. I feel that's my favorite pick because mm. I, I really feel like you got a cornerstone piece. Anytime you draft a cornerstone piece, like all the misses, I can kind of like, all right, okay, you know, I'll I'll let DeAndre slide, but because you got Trey, because like mm. he's a guy that you can build around and potentially become a contender, you know, to to be able to horse that trophy at the end of the year. So. But I think that the DeAndre Hunter one, that was the one I was kind of sold on initially. But now I'm kind of looking at him to like, we're still trying to figure out who this dude is. Because, you know, he had a couple of games in the playoffs, you know, against the Miami Heat, you know, last year. You know, um, and he absolutely went bonkers. And I was like, okay, who is this dude? But, you know, you just don't get that on a consistent basis. Like, so you don't can't really judge like the type of player who he is or what he could be. And he ended up getting paid too, and Travis Knight paid him too. So mm-hmm. that was those are the kind of two moves where I was just like, oh, oh no! And the house are going to be in some some real tight situations from a salary cap standpoint. So they're going to have to make some going to be forced to make a decision on Dejounte Murray now versus waiting because they might not be able to pay him. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with Travis. Like love the Trey Young pick, but the DeAndre Hunter piece. Then you also paying him on top of that. That's the one I was just like, man, that might be a little turd that he lived down here in the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then his his worst draft pick was probably was the Cam Reddish. And Cam Reddish is a good player. Like I thought he was gonna be a solid player. You um, and me both. <laughs> right. So Brandon, did you have anything? Um, before we roll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you some rapid fire questions from the ATL. Or okay. <laughs> so just give me an answer real quick. Hot land. Um Michael Vick or Matty Ice. <sighs> Come on, man. Why you doing me? Like that? <laughs> uh, as much as the kid in me, the biggest big, big fan that I was of Michael Vick, I'm gonna have to go with Matt Ryan. I have to go okay. with Matt Ryan. Yep. Chipper, Chipper Jones or Freddie Freeman? Who? Chipper. Wow, you went Chipper. Yeah, man. I'm old, like old school country guy. Like Freddie, you know, like. There was a couple of little instances. There's like I said, context is king. Like the whole way how he exited, there was I'm still a little sour about that. But yeah, Chipper, man. Absolutely. 100 percent Chipper Jones. Absolutely all day. Got you. I'm an old school hip hop guy. So T I or Luda. Oh, tip. Come on. That's not even a question. Yeah. Goody mob or outcast. Oh, no, no, that's not fair. Like that's, that's not fair. <laughs> Why are you asking me these questions, sir? Uh wow. Uh, I'm gonna go with both, man. I'm gonna cop out. Like, nah, I can't choose between those two, man. Like, <laughs> those guys were a part of my like my upbringing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, they made me who I am today. You know what I'm saying? Part of who I am, anyway. But yeah, man, I can't I can't choose between those two, man. That, that yeah, I'm sorry. Anybody from, that's really from Atlanta, then they wouldn't be able to do the same. Yeah, that's a hard one, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, Rod, you put me Roddy on spot White. With that one. Oh, absolutely. Roddy White or Julio Jones? Ooh, wow. I thought that would be easy for you. Julio. 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 Okay. Julio, yeah. I go Julio. And, yeah. and last one before we roll. The best Falcons running back. Number one. Who you got? Michael Turner. What? Yeah. Not man. Jamal? Michael Turner, man. Michael Not Turner. Michael Burner? Burner Turner, man. Yeah. Like Jamal, Jamal was that guy. Don't get me wrong. But he just didn't do it long enough for my for my liking. Like I really feel like Michael Turner is the best free agent signing the Atlanta Falcons have ever had. Ever. Ever. Got you. All right, cool. Got you. Absolutely great. (laughs) Appreciate it. No problem. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jarvis, for coming on. You got anything to promote or uh, where where can they follow you on social media? You can follow me on Twitter at JarvisD90 and on Instagram as well. And, yo, check out ATL Day 1's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network 
on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Monday through Friday, we out here. All right, and then just real quick, I guess rapid fire too. If you had to give Travis Schlenk a grade for a GM with the Hawks, what would you give him? A solid, strong B B B plus, strong B plus, strong B plus. We'll yeah. take that. We'll take that. All right, we just want to thank you guys for listening and making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. Now, every day, or check us out tomorrow and the rest of the week. We're going to be doing draft talk or any free agency reports that come out for the NBA for the next two weeks until the draft. Thank you for coming on, Jarvis. Thank you guys. Make sure you guys subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube. Hit the like button and also subscribe wherever you guys can get a podcast as well. Hell to the Wizards. Peace. Peace.